Ken, I did a back of the envelope on this deal, and as from what I can tell, Google that's made money. That's an actual envelope. That's, a, that's an actual personal stationery of Corey Johnson in Bloomberg West, and there it is. Google did okay on this transaction, right? Uh, yeah, I, I, I think so. I think, um, you know, from a balance sheet standpoint, um, you could you could look at it and say, all right, well, you know, they sold the set-top box business. They've they're they're selling handsets now. You know, they're keeping a lot of the patents. But I think importantly, it's also allowing Google to lose a potential distraction with a lot of their OEM. This partners. is one of their hallmarks. This is what makes them different. Is they get rid of dogs, don't they? Um, I, I think so, it, but it's, it, I think uh, they'll, they'll definitely take some time to, I think, go through those, those a assets and figure out what is strategic for them. And I think that you know, Google is not getting out of the hardware business here or handsets entirely. They continue to do their own products. Um, I think it's taken some time, and they, I think they, they sort of knew early on that there was a, a, a good chance that they would get rid of, get rid of the handset yeah. business of Motorola because they continue to separate it out even in their financials. Mm -hmm for us. So it was a little confusing to follow Google because you knew, well, is that a Google phone or is that a Motorola phone? And you right. had different accounting based on right. it. But I think at this point, it at least gives some of their partners some assurance. And Tom, you had said million, not billion. It's $2.9 billion Excuse me, dollars lost that, my head. that Google got. Yeah, I'm just return. dazzled about the Super Bowl. I can <laughs> concentrate. Is. Look, I, I mean, I don't think this is a total win-win. I mean, the, these sure. guys, you, you, first of all, I mean, and I, and I don't recall how much cash, and McKen, maybe you do, but how much cash they acquired when they three acquired billion. For, so three billion yeah, but cash. So all in, they're into these patents. So all they've got left from this acquisition are these patents, which they've paid about $4 billion for. Right. And, and there, this is a questionable value. I mean, this, this proves... Take so away. you question the, the value of the patents. Somebody put $5.5 billion on it, and that's a mystery to you, Corey? Absolutely. Do you think it's worth I th less? I think, it might be, I think it might be a liability. I mean, oh, sure. the, 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 historic world, the historic oh, belief in yeah. patents that you acquire, you build, you invent stuff, you patent it, you build a fortress around your patents. That's the way patents used to work. But the way patents seem to work now is that holding a lot of patents and a lot of cash, if you're a big company with a lot of patents, you get sued all the time. And they, and they aren't actually proven to be the defense. Do you have, Ken, do you have Corey skepticism on well, a no, $5 billion? No, I, I think he, he, has, he has a point there, though, that um, the value of the patents are really dependent upon sort of the, the litigation around it. And I think that, um, you know, it, you, you could sort of go into a sort of a patent bubble period where everyone is suing and you need to have that defense, and so patents are being bid up, and people are suing, sort of driving up that bubble, uh, or increasing that bubble still. And it's worth mentioning, too, that Motorola was going to sue Google or was in the... That was kind of in the works before mm. Google bought Motorola. My question is, how much do value do these patents provide, considering how much smartphone technology has changed over the years? Well, I think it's um, uh, it's a good point, but I think it all, there's always that opportunity for for a company to go back in time a little bit too and say, okay, well, what you're doing is actually still infringing upon what we, you know, our patent from years ago. And I think you know, Motorola does give Google some some. Defense there. What we've seen, what we've seen, I'm sorry, what we've seen from the patent suits, first of all, is that they tend to lag by three or four years. Mm -hmm. So the suits going on now are still about the iPhone 3, for right? Example. Interesting. But we haven't seen this pile of patents be a successful defense mm -hmm. in any major patent. Corey, what is the lesson for your Bloomberg West Valley from this transaction? They bought a stodgy. My perception is an amateur. Yeah. A stodgy company. It didn't work out. They jettisoned it to Lenovo. Alex, Lenovo stock went down, right? No, the stock uh, did go down, but they're yeah. the second two maker of uh, smartphones. What's the lesson here for all the smart guys? The big guys? lesson is that big tech mergers don't work. I can't think of a single big tech merger that's ever worked. It's mm -hmm. got to be small and nimble. But what was it? No, I think well, I Marissa think with 30 acquisitions. There's a lot small. of reasons, but well, except that Tumblr was bought for a right. billion dollars by Yahoo. We'll see if that works. And, but that's, I would still say, agree with you that it's not a big, it's big expensive. But it wasn't a big company going with another big tech company. They just they haven't seen it work. Whether it's AOL, Time Warner, or Motorola, Google, that hasn't but, worked. So what was the pressure that Samsung might have applied to Google? Right? I mean, Samsung phones all use Android OS, and here you have Google making their own phone that has Android OS. What yeah, and I think and I can really speak to this better. But I, but I think that you know we knew that Samsung was in development of their own OS. There was always this, this existential threat that Samsung, the biggest seller of Android mm -hmm. products, would someday say, you know what? I think we're going right. to use Microsoft Maps with our next phone. What are you going to do about it, Google? Ken Senna, where do I make money on this? Um, I, I think Google's a good bet here. I think they lose a distraction. With, they get the clarity now. Yeah, and I think they also sort of even the playing field a little bit and make it less about Samsung versus Google and more about maybe Samsung versus Lenovo, Lenovo a little bit, where Google is maybe enabling both of them to kind of fight it out. And Google sort of keep, stays where it where it is best. I spoke to the head of North America, <clears throat> Lenovo and Davos. This is two huge, am I right? Two huge acquisitions?
yeah. for Lenovo and back to back, like in a cup of coffee. You could look at it as as Lenovo's looking at some dogs of, of U.S. tech companies, mm -hmm. whether it's the IBM low margin IBM server business or the Motorola handset business. But they recognize now, I think, that the Chinese market is very different than it was even five years ago, and that the Chinese market alone, in ways that it couldn't five years ago, ten years ago, support these businesses and make them big businesses and profitable businesses in ways that they weren't. Look, for example, what, what happened with Huawei. Huawei has been very successful in China, even as a lot of the world's markets have closed mm -hmm. to them out of concern about having Huawei as a background of telecommunications infrastructure. They're still having great success in China because the Chinese infrastructure business has grown and probably will be growing so much. Mm -hmm. And I got to walk it forward, of course, Google reporting uh, after the bell. What are you guys looking at, the number one thing? Um, you know, for us, I think it's, it's ad growth and on a core basis. And I, and I feel like, we, you know, our checks have all been pretty strong for Google. And so we actually feel that, you know, tonight should be pretty good.